Okay, let's talk about electric meters now. This is probably my least favorite lecture of the year because, so I'm gonna keep it to less than 10 minutes. And the reason is, is that nobody really uses these meters anymore. This is kind of old fashioned stuff. Every, if you're out there in the real uh, world of electrical engineering and so on, we don't really use uh, these things called galvanometers anymore. But um, it's still on the AP outline, so I'm going to cover it real quick. Now, what we need is a way to, we need to measure voltage. And we need a way of measuring, we need to measure current. And we have devices that do this. Uh, a, a, a device that measures voltage is called a voltmeter. And a uh, device that measures, and it's uh, we use a V with a circle around it to, to symbolize a voltmeter. And this is an ammeter. You measure current, it's an ammeter, and it's just an A with a circle around it. Um, now, the way you, let's say you had a circuit that looked like this. So you've got a resistor like this, resistor like this, you know, some complex circuit with R1, R2, R3. Now let's say you wanted to know, you wanted to use a voltmeter, uh, voltmeter to measure the voltage drop across one of the resistors. Now remember, uh, when we're measuring voltage, we want to take our device, our voltmeter, and we want to take the physical leads. And if you're on the uh, electrical team of our robotics team, you, you do this all the time. You measure voltage drops or gains across circuit elements. So you hook them up like this. So let's say I want to know the voltage drop across R1. I would hook it up like this because what I want to know is what is the voltage difference between here and here? Now, if you hook the black lead up here and the red lead right there, I don't have my red pen here, but um, it would actually be a negative voltage because it, it drops in voltage. Okay. Um, but notice that the, the voltmeter is in parallel with R1. Now, let's suppose I wanted to know what is the current running through R3? Well, if you want to know the current, here's what you do. You you put you would put your ammeter in the circuit. You would actually insert the ammeter like this. So and and this makes sense in that you want all the current to go through your meter and then because you want to it goes through the ammeter. Whereas the voltmeter, you want to measure the voltage drop across a circuit element, so you place it in parallel. So voltmeters are in parallel, ammeters are in series uh, within the circuit. Okay, now in the very limited time I have left, I'm going to show you the old-fashioned meters. Everything's digital now, but these, this is how they did it back in the day. They had this thing called a galvanometer. And it was a device that had a, 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 a magnetic field in it, and you would run a, a little tiny trickle of current, and the current would interact with the magnetic field in such a way that it would deflect a, um, a little needle, and then you would calibrate it. Um, and so it, um, it, would, it would have, a, it was just kind of an old fashioned gauge. It would have a little needle attached to this device and it would go from like zero volts over to you know 10 volts or whatever 12 volts whatever you were the the scale was um, you could also use a galvanometer uh, actually um, to uh, to me you can use it to measure current or to measure voltage depending on how you you arrange it now a galvanometer 
um, we're actually going to use um, the letter G with an arrow through it. That means a galvanometer. A galvanometer, uh, if you have current going through a galvanometer, the galvanometer has its own little resistance. I'm going to call that R sub G, the resistance of the galvanometer. And now what we can do is we can use a galvanometer and another resistor, either in parallel or series with it, to, e to make a voltmeter or make an ammeter. Now first, uh, let's make a voltmeter, because that's the easiest one to do. First, we need to know how much current do you need to run through a galvanometer for maximum deflection of the needle. So what is I max? They're going to give you I maximum. That's the maximum current through the galvanometer for maximum deflection of the needle. If you go past this current, the needle will deflect too much. So let's measure the, let's, let's arrange, let's create a meter using a galvanometer to measure the voltage drop across the resistor. So let me come over here. So this is my load resistor. I want to know how much voltage there drop there is across here. But I want to do it in such a way that I do not um, affect the circuit very much. I don't want to change the current very much going through the load resistor. So what I do, and here's my meter. Here are the leads that lead to the voltmeter. So here's my voltmeter, but in detail. I got a big resistor like this. And then um, I will have a little resistor right here. This is R sub G. And we'll just call this R. And then here's our meter like this. And this is the voltmeter inside here. So um, what you want to do is say, OK, what what is what voltage do I want to be able to measure? Well, uh, let's say I say, well, the maximum voltage I'm ever I'm going to have the circuit is 12 volts. So you would arrange this resistor. If, if you're given this, you would arrange this so that for the current of maximum deflection, which is going to be a very small current, um, you will get 12 volts from here to here. You just add these two resistors together and then solve for R to get 12 volts. Now, let's say you want to have an ammeter. An ammeter is a little different. I'm going to call this R sub S. This is the shunt resistor. And then I'll put my galvanometer over here. Because here's what I want to do. I want to dramatically reduce. I, I don't want this to be a big voltage drop. So to do that, for maximum deflection, I want to have, here's I max for maximum deflection. I want this resistor to be really, really small. I want the maximum current to go through here. I'm mean, not the maximum current. I mean, I want almost all the current to go through here. Let's say I want to go 10, um, 10 amps. But let's say a galvanometer might only need a, a, a hundredth of an amp for maximum deflection. You will arrange this so that, well, this voltage drop and this voltage drop will be the same. If you know this resistor and you know this maximum current, um, you can figure out what the voltage drop is here. You want the same voltage drop over here, so you solve for this resistance. For um, So let's say uh, you want, and I'm just about to run out of time, the bell's about to ring. Let's say I want to measure 10 amps. Well, if this takes 0.1 amps to go through, how much current is actually going to go through here? Well, 9.9 .9 amps, right? Because 9.9 .9 plus 0.1 adds up to 10. So it is going to change the circuit a little bit. But for an ammeter, this is a voltmeter. 
and this over here is an ammeter I don't know why they leave the P out they don't call it an amp meter yeah this is the whole amp meter right here remember you're not you're not going across any circuit element you're not going across the resistor you just want all the current to come in and then come out of your ammeter but what you're going to be doing is solve there's a couple of problems where you have to solve for this resistance and then another one where you solve for this resistance the key is how much current goes through the galvanometer for maximum deflection and you just treat it like a circuit